Hey there, my name is Sean Wenham. I'm the lead artist on Murder Mission Machine, and today I'm going to talk you through um, the art of the game, the journey, um, how we started with the initial ideas and the concepts, and what led us to what you'll be uh, playing today. Um, so I'm going to run through the game, just talk you through it, give a kind of behind the scenes look. Um, so this is Cass's first day at the DCA. Um, she arrives and we're about to meet Detective Nathaniel Houston, Nate. Um, so yeah, let's play. So this basement um, is, is basically the hub, the central hub of the game, which you'll come back to between cases. Um, we wanted to really show the progression from um, your first day to the end. So as you um, unlock different crimes and resolve cases, the basement will kind of reflect your progress as a detective. Um, ignore this uh, pizza box here. This is a debug item I'm going to use to kind of skip through to some of the scenes. So I can speak to Nate here. Um, and he isn't super thrilled at the idea of having a new partner so I can have a bit of exchange here the um it's kind of a good moment to talk about the actual characters themselves so it was a we did a lot of pre-production on motor mission machine um went through a lot of ideas um and kind of iterations to get where we got um i'm going to share some concept art so this is concept art by um, Joanna Nevis, who is a freelance um, concept artist and illustrator um, from Portugal. She has a very cool style, very, very graphic, bold colors, and um, she has a very good sense of fashion. And this game, Murder Mission Machine, is set in the 80s, and we kind of wanted to capture that sort of... Um, glamour and style of the period. So these um, these characters were kind of developed very early on. We actually, um, we did play about with kind of futuristic styles and um, very old um, kind of medieval looks as well. But we kind of, um, we're all very into sort of kind of true crime genres and especially American, sort of the underbelly of society, um, especially in the 80s when there was a lot of sort of wealth and um, prosperity, but at the same time, a lot of decline. And so we settled on that period and Joanna made started out with these kind of very kind of of the period costumes um, and characters. So, yeah, skipping over um these but it's always kind of just interesting looking back at just kind of you know what we were thinking at different times um so with the time period settled we the first thing we needed was the actual detectives themselves um so the names Cass and Nate weren't even around at this point and we just started with um these concepts like uh um we're kind of at this point we're just looking for the kind of how they were as a as a duo as a dynamic and um i mean just even looking at these two characters like they're you kind of you can infer just these sort of stories from them they look like quite a pair um and i mean these like i mean it would just been a very different game if we went with these but like i do just love these outfits and that pose and stuff like this kind of like super grace jones and um it's very cool um, so we like worked with Jenna feeding back and we did another round of designs. Um, and you'll actually see here, this is the initial drawing of Cass and Nate. Um, like we like the height mismatch, um, and just a kind of not having like two identical partners, but not going for the normal cliche sort of one hard boiled kind of bad cop and one like sort of good cop. We just kind of wanted a bit more nuance in the characters. And when we saw these two, um, I think everyone was just kind of like 
like who is this guy this like kind of like slender handsome um man and this kind of more sort of um know-it-all lady and um we didn't keep these outfits we actually originally made them but um because as the story so the story is always developing alongside the art and as the writers were kind of coming in coming up with the actual names and the backgrounds um we decided that we wanted them to actually be police not like lapd like city police but this kind of special agency which we call the dca and to reflect that we kind of went for more uniforms so we started with these kind of very like sort of almost like traditional cop outfits um i really love these kind of sunglasses and all the straps and stuff like uh um but we did go for these sort of more like fbi looking big coats um and this is this is the sort of final design you'll see this in the game as you're playing through um, for most of it you do unlock outfits um and so as you progress you get the kind of more sort of um cloak and dagger sort of look the the long overcoats um this was the final design we went with, with this so in the later game you can um unlock these outfits um and yeah here's just uh this is a more like worked up image of cassinate and stuff um but yeah we did end up taking the cigarette out just didn't want to give the wrong message but yeah i just also wanted to share um while we're going through some of china's work just her other um some of her other concepts and outfits um this made um was from like when we were thinking of it being a game set in a past period and we might revisit this kind of past period world because we did um it was fleshed out and it would be nice to kind of go back and use some of that stuff but yeah this this maid was quite uh, an important character in there um but yeah just these um really just elegant outfits we we kind of we wanted to have a few sort of more like curmudgeonly old men um we were looking for more like sort of tropes in kind of like old murder mysteries kind of cluedo um that kind of stuff you have like the curmudgeon you have the bombshell um those kind of character types and just taking those kind of very um kind of those old cliches and just reimagining them in a um an 80s america um but yeah so going back to the game um so yeah you'll recognize these outfits um from joanna's concepts here um just cass is trying to justify her being there nate giving it the old hard boil just going to click through this once you play the game you'll have time to digest and go through so yeah this um this basement um as i mentioned earlier it is a central hub so it was very important that um we got this right um i'm just going to access this quickly to get rid of the um prompt to do so um so yeah this here like nate's been kind of relegated to this basement um he's kind of become a bit of a um kind of in a lot of solitude just working away on his own um i think we can all sort of relate to that mindset now um a lot more but he doesn't want someone in his space um and as the game progresses like this this lovely area here will become um your desk and you're just kind of it'll be a bit more nicely decorated as you go along um so i'm just going to use this debug to um unlock a crime so i can jump forward one um i felt appropriate just to have a pizza slice as the uh the unlock to go forward so you won't see this this is just a developer build um 
but yeah, I think this is a good moment to actually talk a little bit about the uh, the basement. Um, so whenever we start um, a new environment, we always do a lot of research. Um, like if I'm going to be spending um, a few days on a concept, like I'll spend a couple of days on like just reference, just like looking at everything I can imagine that will have some relation to what I want to make, like looking at cables, piping structures, old hardware, these, uh, I think it's actually a prop photo from um, True Detective. Um, this is a, a real life PI, um, which, I mean, this is a cool space, but it doesn't quite kind of capture that sort of glamour um, of being a, a detective, of being kind of hard now, and um, this is a very well color coded wall. Um, I don't think that's real. Um, yeah, just kind of anything that sparks like kind of a thought, not just for the art, but for design as well. Like uh, a lot of these things can um, just generate an idea for like a crime or for an objective. Um, here like this was thinking like we didn't quite go this far with the basement unlocking progression but um having just a super suave um final state of the basement um so we're kind of looking a lot of sort of sid mead retro futurism there um just like any idea that we can find really um and then so always just starting with a quick sketch this um this is just more of a sketch of how like the final basement would look, but we ended up going with what you'll see in the game. This kind of um, let's get the actual angle from which is seeing it. So you can see we stuck very closely to that concept, um, and there's this idea of having two desks, the two detectives. As you play the game, um, this wall populates with um, photos from the crime scene so as you're going each um, each episode just more and more until eventually uh, these walls will just be like covered in um, photos kind of more like these sort of references that we see here like this um, uh, I think this is from True Detective this is just like I love this like plastering of just like every inch of wall space is just covered in like ideas and thoughts and like case progression um there's like a little crappy coffee machine and a couple of bottles of alcohol like it just it just tells a really nice story um but yeah um so this this is a an old version of the mmm machine which i'll get into in a bit um but yeah this so uh you won't see this in the demo and we never actually went for these blue walls in this machine um, but you will see this kind of opening up and cleaning of the basement. Um, this uh, this coffee machine station and uh, sink um, we kept very specifically. These chairs, the desk style, um, these shelves, and that kind of just general sort of cardboard box cluttering storage space type thing. Um, so yeah, the MMM murder mystery machine. Um, in early development, the actual MMM itself was a very important part. Um, it didn't get sort of um, relegated, but like right now, um, as you start the game, like this is the MMM. So this is the interface that you use to actually play the game, to jump into the crime scenes. And basically like the story progression comes through this. Um, like we just enjoyed the idea of um, I guess kind of a nickname being like oh it's the mmm the murder mission machine and they the detectives themselves would use this machine um to kind of i guess as a way of cataloging um and sort of storing case information um but the machine itself does progress a little bit as you go through the game but right now it's kind of you can see it's all like taped together like there's like little bits here um we're kind of can't quite see it from this angle what these like three screens here are supposed to like kind of mimic the isometric view that the game has um and then further that with the isometric mmm title bouncing around the screen um 
but we had a lot of um, kind of iterations on that. Um, I really love this idea of just um, <laughs> this guy here, just um, using like plastic crates to kind of store all, like the excess wires and stuff. Here's, a, here's that three screen thing that did make it into the, the final design, hooked up to like an old CRT cable TV. And um, this here is kind of what was specifically used as the concept for the 3D modeler to actually create the, uh, the MMM. Um, be able to kind of have uh, ideas of kind of vast cabling and, and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's always just kind of fascinating to see where the progression goes. Um, so I'm going to jump into a crime scene. Um, when you're playing the demo, um, you'll have these three scenes available to you in, um, and you'll progress through them. I'm going to jump to a bar here just to give you like a preview of uh, some of the other environments. So yeah, this is the dive bar or the dust till dawn bar. Um, this is one of my favorite scenes in the game. Um, it's the actual first one um, that was concepted and the first one we actually made in 3D in Unity. Um, so yeah, it's just got that really nice American kind of dive bar sort of feel a kind of um more of like an east coast um more like boston new york philadelphia kind of feel to it you got the bar fly and the kind of regulars um like looking at kind of 80s american bar decor it's very um you know it's it's not trying to be anything it's just the owner decorating it with their own sort of taste and kind of um, details and things that just build up over the years. Um, again, just like other scenes, um, we always just start with a lot of reference. So here, um, <laughs> got a bit of True Detective again, but these these old photos of uh, this is like an old bar in New York and stuff just. Um, these old crates, which we um, kind of use specifically, um, these kind of behind the bar things like this, I'm trying to kind of get an idea of what the actual materials were back here, this kind of sort of slatted wood, these sort of um, very plain, um, I think this, this photo here specifically, we kind of used as like a sort of light bounce reference for the floor we put in there. Um, shiny bottles, neon lights, those kind of classic sort of um, American beer brands and um, the smoky feel, um, like you get that kind of here, um, which you obviously don't get anymore, but kind of capturing that atmosphere of just kind of being in a down and out bar in America. Um, it's very, especially here from like Scotland, it's just, there's a lot of romance involved with the idea of just American bars and um, kind of strangers and um, enemies meeting and conversing. And um, we really just enjoyed that idea. Um, so it seemed like a good first step for creating um, a scene for Murder Mission Machine. Here, like, um, this is just sort of a kind of a breakdown of what a uh, like what our 3d art team was given so this um this isn't the the final color concept but this kind of just base color layout plus these sort of um kind of directions on what sort of materials and what kind of um like light reactions we want from different surfaces specific props this crate um that i mentioned earlier kind of wood slatting it all just kind of comes together through this um we had a little play with different lighting um this i mean 80s today seems to have more of a kind of pink and blue neon light thing um this was going too far in that i mean it was fun it was very kind of nicholas winding reffin but it's just uh it it didn't have that kind of um wholesome uh dive bar feel um here just kind of looking more of like a bright sunny day coming in and playing with just an actual um just kind of a murder scenario i guess um so here like the dartboard's missing this has been knocked off it's landed here 
like how has this happened here kind of starting with the murder and working the way back from there um so this was the final concept of the game um you can see i mean this murder doesn't actually take place in the game but it's that kind of that same thinking of starting with an image and a murder and when i painted this i had like a rough idea of what was going on kind of using an environment to tell a story so like this hatch has fallen down after the the blood has been there there's two chairs two coats um there's two bodies they were having a drink some cash there's blood on the cash so again like this happened pre the actual incident of murder um the footprints the photo like all these kind of things to just kind of spark ideas in the player of like what could happen here and this was the kind of mindset we went forward with when actually uh coming up with the murders and the stories um but yeah just um yeah i just i love all this like neon light and stuff it just um and bloom i mean i'm i'm an apologist for bloom i just uh um when it's not enabled i miss it it just gives that nice like warm vibe and fuzz um it's really good so yeah um i'm not actually gonna go in and speak to the characters i'm gonna let you do that in your own time but i just wanted to show you this environment kind of give you a background of where we're coming from with it there's Nate being very kind of cool, just leaning there. Um, this guy. But yeah, so um, I'm going to come back out and show you another scene. Um, again, when you're playing through, you'll have to um, complete that scene to then be going on to the next scene. Um, but for the purpose of explaining some of the art i think this is a nice way to go through so this is the motel scene um the sleep easy motel there's a um a car park scene outside which uh, you'll see in episode two of murder mystery machine um having some fun with framing there um so yeah this is just again going for that kind of seedy underbelly of 80s america um the the main inspiration for this was um this jim jarmusch film where like uh it's set largely in this motel these kind of really kind of kitschy sort of decorations um and like i just love this like pink bathroom pink walls um but with that kind of dirt to it um and again, like starting with the reference, going on to the concept, I uh, I just I love this kind of red light coming in through that. Like there's um there's a scene in Alien Noir where I think it's quite early in the game where it's just this like kind of red neon light coming through the window and just picking up the light and um that's always kind of stuck with me. Um kind of here exploring quite a gruesome murder. Um uh just the clothes hung up, the blood splatter, the kind of suggestion of the hairdryer by the bathtub, um, and then the actual kind of final lighting applied to it. The in-game um, version is quite drastically different from that. Um, there's a lot of uh, kind of considerations with the story and where we were at this point that kind of necessitated the need to change the layout. Um, Change it around, but still kept these lovely pink bathroom fittings. Really like that. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure what kind of motel room would come with its own fish tank, but um, yeah, he's clearly been in this room for a long time um, and wasn't expecting the police, so there's a lot of kind of clutter and junk spread around. Um, yeah, the, um, the actual, the wool coming away thing, we do actually have like a slight, um, kind of spring to the item. So like some things go away a bit quicker than others. It's, um, it's always hard when dealing with isometric games because 
this view is really nice but when you are behind a wall you know what do you do and we kind of quickly sort of settled on the idea of being able to rotate and then pulling walls away that way instead of doing the kind of the dropping the walls or lowering the opacity of the walls it kind of gives the inside like the core of the diorama more kind of solidity um, and kind of just makes it more enjoyable to kind of uh, rotate around like that um, last thing I want to show you is just a little bit of um, uh, the actual kind of a sample I guess of the basement progression so like this is it when you start with um, day one and then you can see so after you uh, complete your first crime we get these um, dressings on the wall um, the boxes have been cleared away it's up to the player to infer the story going on between these crime scenes um, but I think like for me it's just very important that like Cassandra or Cass um, sort of really establishes her space in the basement and then this um, will continue to progress as you go along um, so kind of further case developments and stuff yeah getting that basement progression and um, just feeling a bit more ownership of the space but yeah so that concludes my brief run through of the game and the kind of journey um, we took to arrive at what you'll be playing hopefully today so yeah I hope you check out the demo um, it'd be good to hear from you hear your thoughts um, see what you think of the game the demo and when it comes out um, soon so thank you very much um, hope you've enjoyed it I've enjoyed running through this with you and yeah take care